Praise the Lord. Um, some of us will know Mephibosheth. Some of us will not know Mephibosheth. But as a quick re recap, you remember the friendship between Jonathan and David. But Mephibosheth was the only living son that Jonathan had. He was the only survivor of Saul's family after Saul and his family died. Okay? Then Mephibosheth, you, the first passage we read, that Second Samuel chapter 4, verse 4 says, He was lame in both limbs. Because the nurse that was carrying him was trying to run during that period, now dropped in. Maybe he had some fractures and became lame in both limbs. So we'll look at his life. There is a lot of lesson there. The first point of reflection I have is that your current state may not be your fault. But getting out of that state is your responsibility. What do I mean? Mephibosheth's nurse, she wasn't intentionally careless. She was running. That was how she dropped him. Because she was in danger and she mistakenly dropped him. But she could have also left him there after she dropped him. She was a nurse. There was no commitment per se except conscience. So she could have left him, left him there. But she still picked him up and took care of him. You ask me how did I know? That's the only way a five-year-old could have survived. Someone must have taken care of him. Okay? And um, how this relates to us is sometimes our caregivers, our parents, and you just name it, everybody carries some form of trauma or the other from childhood, some form of family dysfunction or the other from childhood. And it could be maybe your parents are running from the daily challenges of life. Your caretaker has so many struggles to deal with. And for some people, it is career struggles and everything. Some people, their own caregivers, even had their own emotional and spiritual battles that they were fighting. How does this one impact us? It leaves us with some form of shortcomings. I'm here to find somebody who will say that my, my childhood was speak and span. If they say that, they have not examined it critically. So it leaves us with some of those kind of shortcomings. Looks like Mephibosheth's son in some way. Mephibosheth was dropped. We too, in one way or the other, may have fallen a couple of times in childhood, leaving us with scars, wounds, traumas, and the rest. And we would have carried these scars for the rest of our life, except the grace of God comes in and undo these scars, as you will come to see that that grace um, came through for Mephibosheth. Now, this, saying this is not like a blame game of, oh, my parents did this, that's why I'm like this. If they had not done this, I would have been like that. It's just a cycle of misery that doesn't get anybody out of it. It is realizing that, okay, oh, I have been wounded by some things in life. And now deciding that I want to give that healing to God. Rather than bleed all over the place. Because Mephibosheth was limping through life. And until grace came through, he would have limped to his death. And this was royalty who was crippled. Okay? So Mephibosheth's nurse did not abandon him. And so did our own caregivers or our own parents. Because sometimes people still have that mindset of, my parents did this, that's why I'm like this. No. They did the best they could have done. They did the best they could have done. That the nurse still managed to still raise Mephibosheth, despite his in her initial mistake, goes to show that she still gave something. If she wanted to really mess it up completely, she would have left him there. So our own caregivers did the best they could have done. For some people, they will, some people will even say that, okay, well, their own parents even abandoned them completely. I've had the privilege of talking with ladies whose families push them or, or just from one place to the other. And they, they have that feeling of, okay, I don't have a place to call home. But I also look at it as if God still put some people to step in and still finish the job and you grow from that five-year-old to a 25-year-old. Something stepped in, someone stepped in. That still leaves room for you to know that, okay, I can still access this grace. That's my first point. The second point I then learned from there is, just out of the blues, David said they should go and call Mephibosheth. Now said from today, you will eat at the table with me. And out of the blues, he gave him all of his grandfather's property. Ziba was a servant of Saul. Ziba was a big man because a servant himself had another 20 servants. 
uh, David now told him that all of the farmlands of Saul, farm it and give the profit to your to your master's son, who is Mephibosheth. But Mephibosheth, he will not walk. He will just sit and eat on the table with, with um, David. And what I learned here is grace brings leverage. Because otherwise, what is a crippled person doing on a king's table? What is the relationship? It was grace that stepped in. And it was grace that brought Mephibosheth to David's table. God stood in the gap and grace gave him a place and a voice. Grace to, through God can do the same for you because they will say you have two things, either an excuse or success. You can't have both. And many times, even today's conversation is also like God's giving us another opportunity for grace that regardless of what may have happened, what the narrative may have looked like before, once he hands you grace and he gives you people or opportunities that can make life better, let's embrace such graces and leverage on it. We leverage on it not for ourselves alone, but even for generations to come. Because when I was checking, and I realized that even Mephibosheth had a child, Micah. The, that one is in First Chronicles chapter 9, verse 40, for those that want to check it later. The way Mephibosheth's life ended, after that passage, you didn't hear Mephibosheth, you didn't hear Micah. This was somebody who was so graced and privileged to sit on the table with David the king. I don't think there was any other king that reigned like David in the history of Israel. No other king. So how can you get so close to the opportunity to make life turn around and not use it well? Sometimes we do the same. Way. We're just looking at it from the life of Mephibosheth. The single, this single encounter that Mephibosheth had was all he needed in life. And sometimes God gives us that single encounter too. I know my own single encounter. My own single encounter was getting out of depression. And that was all I needed in life. And where I am now, there's nothing I cannot do except God says it's not in my plan. But that was all the single encounter I had, I needed. So and God would always, and sometimes when we miss that single encounter, it gives you a second one, it gives you a third one until if there's anything like running out of chances. If there's anything, I wouldn't know. But Every chance that gets into our hand is a chance to say, okay, grace has found me today. Regardless of what the story looked like before, now I am going to rewrite it. You wake up and you can breathe air into your lungs. That is a miracle going there. It's not the next thought will now be, what am I going to eat today? That you can even be hungry is a miracle on its own. Until you are in the hospital, you find people that they have pipes everywhere. Whether they are hungry or not, they don't even know again. It's pipes that does the feeding. So, because when, when people hear grace, they're also looking for one mega miracle, one uncle calls and drops some money into your account. That's not the kind of grace I mean. Willingness to even see grace in the small, small things of life would open doors for bigger ones. That's the second lesson I learned from them. Then the third lesson I then picked was in 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 to 4. 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 to 4. I have it, so I would read it. When David was a little past the top of the mountain, there was Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, who met him with a couple of saddled donkeys, and on them 200 loaves of bread, 100 clusters of raisin, 100 summer fruits, and a skin of wine. And the king said to Ziba, What do you mean to do with this? So Ziba said, the donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, the bread and the summer fruits for the young men to eat, and the wine for those who are faint in the wilderness to drink. Then the king said, And where is your master's son? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is staying in Jerusalem. For he said, Today the house of Israel will restore the kingdom of my father to me. You, we know who Ziba is now. Ziba was Saul's servant, who is now Micah's, who is now Mephibosheth's servant. This story came from when Absalom um, wanted to inherit the throne and David had to run from Israel. The whole of 2 Samuel is something that we should make plans to read this week so that we can understand what I'm saying. But David was in exile at this point, running from his own son. Ziba was the one that came to meet David on the way 
Where was Mephibosheth? How come it was Ziba that came and was saying that Mephibosheth said, Indeed, today Israel will restore the kingdom of my father to be. The lesson I learned here is, are we appropriating the grace we have been given? Where was Mephibosheth? How come it was Ziba who came to David? Mephibosheth, who had received the royal place by grace, did not act like this grace was on his life. Ziba, a servant, knew what to do better than him. Could it be that his place had changed, but his mind had not changed? Because sometimes God brings us into opportunity, but we have not leveled up our psyche and our mind to approach that opportunity, and that opportunity will just slip. So really, he could be sitting at the table, but he's, he still had a very, very warped mindset. Until God changes our mind, many times we'll keep sabotaging ourselves and we'll fail to appropriate the graces of God on our life. Because many times we'll say, God, give me this opportunity, give me that opportunity. Really wants to give you everything. It is that our mind can it carry the weight of such responsibility. It's like me praying to be the president of the country. Have I managed my own establishment well? Can I carry the mental burden of managing a country? So it's not as if God doesn't want to give me such a prayer, the answer to such a prayer. But in reality, I know that is a sabotage of grace that could have been given to someone who will use it better. So second point of reflection or the third point of reflection is every one of us have some glorious visions and dreams and desires we have in, that we want God to achieve. But are we even doing the mental and the spiritual work to prepare us for when that space comes. Because if the space comes, if the position comes before we are mentally and spiritually prepared, we will sabotage it. Because this is what I saw happening in Ziba's case. They, I, can't, I don't know the kind of excuse he wanted to give me. This was a royal son, the son of the king who just died, who would have estates, who would have servants, who would have horses, who would probably have chariots. What was his excuse? That he wasn't there to at least assist David with those things. And this was the same man that helped him. And this would have been another opportunity for him to at least enjoy some more promotion in life. Then the fourth point I then learned, I, I also saw it from 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 24 to 30. 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 24 to 30. 30. I have it so I will read it. Now Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, and he had not cared for his feet, nor trimmed his moustache, nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he returned in peace. So it was when he had come to Jerusalem to meet the king that the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said, I will saddle a donkey for myself, that I may ride on it and go to the king, because your servant is lame, and he has slandered your servant to my lord the king. But my lord the king is like the angel of God. Therefore, do what is good in your eyes. For all of my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet you set your servant among those who eat at your own table. Therefore, what right have I still to cry any more to the king? So the king said to him, Why do you seek any more of your matters? I have said, You and Ziba divide the land. Then Mephibosheth said to the king, Rather, let him take it all, inasmuch as my lord the king has come back in peace to his own house. I saw this and I saw... It's still the same thing. Opportunities will come many times. But, but sometimes, or many times, we would also sabotage that opportunity. The reflection I picked here is that you will have either an excuse, an excuse story, or a success story, but you can never have both. I'm here to find a successful person who has 20 excuses for some other things that could have happened. It's not as if those challenges will not come, but it is either will I muzzle my way through it, or I will keep saying this one that, this one that one happened. Because here, yeah, what question did the king ask? Why did you not follow me, Mephibosheth? And what will he say? 
He said his servant deceived him because you rather let him take it all. In as much as my Lord the King has come back in peace to his own house. I saw this and I saw still the same thing. Opportunities will come many times, but, but sometimes or many times too, we would also sabotage that opportunity. The reflection I picked here is that you will have either an excuse, an excuse story or a success story, but you can never have both. I'm here to find a successful person who has 20 excuses for some other things that could have happened. It's not as if those challenges will not come, but it is either will I muzzle my way through it, or I will start, keep saying this one that, this one that one happened. Because here, yeah, what question did the king ask? Why did you not follow me, Mephibosheth? And what will he say? He said his servant deceived him. Because your, his servant, which is Ziba, deceived him because he, Mephibosheth, is lame. David knew you were lame when he asked that question. His question is not whether you are lame, which is, again, his excuses. Ah, you know I'm not so well-spoken. You know I'm not really a people's person. You know I'm very emotional. You know I get hungry easily. Those are all excuses. You cannot have a success story and an excuse story. It doesn't go together. And many times, we will just keep sabotaging that grace of God on our life. Because going forward... Going forward, um, he now said, uh, David now told him that they should share the property. And he now said, no, let Ziba just have it. Who does that? Because the initial statement that David said was that Ziba should take all of Saul's property when he followed him out. And he was asking for maybe Fibosheth. So for the king to now give another second chance and say, okay, the two of you divide it. Half of the property of a king, are you telling me that you cannot start a fortune with it? But in his own mind, he felt, no. May I see if um, Mephibosheth as somebody who did not, whose mind has not grown to the extent of the opportunity that he was given. He said, let him take it all. He said, in as much as you, my king, has come back in peace. Why will he say that? Because you know at least he will eat at the king's table. He has no plan to be better. He has no vision to be better. He, he has been given an opportunity and is not willing to work his mind to improve this. Now, how does this one concern us? Mephibosheth was dropped. He became lame through no fault of his. That is a fact. But did God, did God give, present him opportunity for grace? He, oh, yes. He had a lot of opportunities. Did he use, his, use it well? Not really. So now, looking at ourselves, people will say, I am here because my parents are poor. If my parents are not poor, I would have gone further in life. I am here because I was abused. If I wasn't abused, I would not be doing this. I am here because I am not academically smart. If I wasn't, I would be this. People will just keep making excuses till tomorrow. Excuses that affect how much you can impact your generation and how great your destiny can be. We have said it a lot of time. Nobody sends any, God doesn't send anybody into the world. Just you, just go and occupy space. There is greatness attached to you. There is a real purpose and a real reason for you being here. Now, if I now limp, say I limp in, I limp in and somebody is giving me a divine crutch to lean on, which is grace. It's a question of do I still keep looking back and say this person injured me, that's why I'm limping. Or I collect this crutch and see what it is I can do with it. And so today again, grace is being handed to us. Oppor another opportunity for a fresh start is being handed to us. Let's examine those areas where we are limping. Not by any fault of our soul. Really, I did not choose any family to be born into. Nobody chooses that. Nobody chooses to have some, to be abused as a child and some other things. But that should not be the narrative of our life. It happened then. It shouldn't continue into the future. They will say God is in your future. He's not in your past. I can't keep x-raying the miseries of my childhood. I want to use it to write the narrative of my future. It will not work. It has happened. It has happened. Let's commit those issues to God. And now see, okay, what can I learn from this experience? Because Ziba had a lot of things to learn. The friendship between, him, uh, between his, father, uh, his father Jonathan and David was a good place to start with. 
the mistake that his own father-in-law did was also a good place to start with that he could know that okay how can we do it but all of those opportunities were presented but it was not appropriated so what graces is god giving us today what opportunities is he presenting in our heart of heart we know such opportunities are we giving it the best the person that is a school student that is a student are you giving academics the best the one that is not a student whether it's faith that you have time for are you giving it the best if it's one glorious future you are open for are you doing the mental and the spiritual work that you will need to stand in that space in the future even if we have been injured before grace has been presented again let us not waste it you will have two stories in life always either a story of excuses or a story of success which one will it be i pray god helps us in jesus name thank you very much rather let him take it all in as much as my lord the king has come back in peace to his own house i saw this and i saw still the same thing.